I have new goals. Definitely feels weird not being in meat prep. Four months has passed and it's like, I feel like everything is just so different now. Obviously, I still have a very specific diet and I still stay on track of my health. But it's like, I kind of have a little bit more freedom now, which I'm not used to. Like, I can drink wine whenever I want. I can go out and drink Mars whenever I want. It's definitely different. And I miss having that goal in mind and being so disciplined to reach that goal. But now it's kind of like, okay, now what's next? And I hope this is the same goals as you guys because the videos are going to be popping. It's bulky season. It's bulky season and we gotta grow. We're definitely going up another weight class. I put some long thought into it and I definitely think it will benefit me in the long run. And I feel like I have so much strength that I think it just requires a little bit more weight on me. Out of nine meets, eight of them, I competed at 60 kilos and I feel like, babe, we gotta retire. I can't just keep myself so small and expect to grow in the long run in this powerlifting journey. Powerlifting definitely requires you to have, to put on more weight, put on more muscle eventually. So babe, we're gonna stop being scared. You know, 2024 is coming, we can't be scared to make changes and scared to be uncomfortable. This fall is getting cold outside. We need to bulk up and get this booty popping, okay? Of course, I'm gonna take you guys through this booty workout with me today. Let's hop into the video. What I eat in a day during bulk season, okay? First thing is first. I'm drinking some tea right now. These are homemade juice. You can look at this Instagram reel that I made. So you guys follow me at Answer Mary Fit. Make sure to follow all my socials, all the same username. But if you're having problems with gut health or you're very bloated in the morning, what are you drinking? Are you drinking your calories? Are you drinking carbonated pop for breakfast? Even though you can claim that the soda you're drinking has zero calories, but that does not matter. That's not going to help stop your body from bloating because of all that carbonation that is in the drink. Eventually, you have to start cutting those out and start replacing with teas and natural homemade juices that are going to help reduce your bloating because even though you are bulking, you still want a flat tummy. Putting these drinks into my morning routine has helped tremendously. <laughs> between should I eat carbs or protein before my workout? Which one is better for my workout? Which one is better for after my workout? Carbs are the essential energy source. We all know that. But consuming the right amount of carbohydrates before a workout will ensure that the body has enough energy to perform well. So if you are trying to build muscle, build strength in the gym, you need that fuel, you need that energy to fuel your workout. So having a good natural carb source, whether that's oats, potatoes, rice, whatever it is. Having that natural source of energy before your workout will help fuel your body so that way you're going to have a great and energized workout. Now a protein, of course some protein should be consumed as well before your workout, but it's not very necessary. I would say save that for after your workout. You do not need a significant amount of protein before your workout. Protein takes longer to digest in your body. When it comes to carbs, it digests very quickly. So protein, it takes a little bit longer. It doesn't serve an immediate need for the beginning of an activity or a workout. getting into a full glute workout for beginners so if you are new to the gym or you are searching through youtube or tiktok and you see all of the glute workouts that are too advanced for your level of fitness do not worry girl make sure you watch this video and make sure you take notes okay so we are starting off with stretching if you guys are interested in a full video explaining my stretching routine then please comment down below we're not going to get in depth with my stretching routine in this video so we're just going to hop right into glute activation okay so first thing is first this glute activation 
activation is only for activation only. This is not to grow your glutes. Fire hydrants and donkey kicks are great glute activation, but they are not going to grow a booty. So if you're only using bands, just know that it is quite impossible to grow your glutes with just a resistance band. But these are great exercises to fire up your glutes and get them ready for a heavy glute day. We are starting off with squats on the Smith machine. Now I know that squats does not primarily target your glutes and there are other exercises that targets your glutes more than just squats, but I'm putting this in this video because as a beginner in the gym, it is so important to work every body part, every muscle of your body so that way your body is proportionate. If you want your lower body to be proportionate, then babe, I'm gonna need you to do your squats. Do not skip out on your squats. So the Smith machine is a way better alternative than the barbell squat, especially if you are new to the gym and you are not yet comfortable with squatting with free weights. The way you set up is quite different than the normal barbell squat. So you see my legs were right directly underneath the bar. You actually want to place your feet forward as if you are slightly leaning back. Now, as you see here, I'm going to tuck in my core. I'm not going to overextend my core when I'm squatting. I'm tucking in my core and making sure it's nice and tight and I'm making sure I'm going full range of motion, going low as I can because your glutes are working the most at the bottom of the rep. So this is going on to my next point. You do not have to squeeze your glutes at the top of the rep. That's doing absolutely nothing. The bottom of the rep is where the growth occurs, is where there's most tension in the movement. If you want to get the glute activation out of the squats, you need to be going as low as you can. So we're not going to be doing quarter squats. Quarter squats are not bad, but it's not targeting your glutes. So I'm going to need you to go as low as possible. Keep practicing hitting depth each rep. Next, we have dumbbell RDO. Most common exercise I see wrong with beginners in the gym. Practice your form without weights first. So this is the prime example as I talk about in other videos to push your glutes back as far as possible as if there's a wall behind you. So actually get a wall behind you and push those glutes back as hard as you can. Keep pushing that booty back on the wall. Keep a slight bend in your knees until you feel that stretch in your hamstrings. Now remember this, this is not a squatting exercise. So do not squat the RDO because that is not targeting your glutes. Also make sure to not round your back as you're going down because that's putting too much pressure on your lower back and that can lead to injury. So make sure your lower back is tucked in. Your knees are bent at a 30 degree angle and go as far down as possible. Even if you can't get low right now, most likely you have tight hips. So that's why stretching and hip mobility exercises are so beneficial because it helps correct your form with most exercises. Of course, we are getting into a dumbbell hip thrust. Barbell hip thrust requires you to be more stable, more sturdy. So dumbbell hip thrusts are a great alternative until you get your form down right and you are confident in your form. First things first, we have to tuck in our core as you see here. I'm keeping my chin tucked to my chest. I don't want my head to be overextended because that can cause strain in my neck. And make sure you are squeezing your glutes as hard as you can. You are pushing through your heels. I always see people ask, how do you get a heavy dumbbell on top of your legs? Girl, stop acting like you're not stronger than that dumbbell. Even if it's heavy, you gotta do what you gotta do to grow that booty, okay? So pick up the dumbbell and stop acting like the dumbbell is stronger than you because it's not, okay? Up next. I'm keeping my legs at a 90 degree angle so I can target my glutes. If the legs are too far away from your body, that's targeting more hamstrings. And the closer it is to your body, it's targeting more glutes. So make sure it's at a 90 degree angle. And of course, I'm supersetting the weighted hip thrust with a single leg hip thrust. And when I threw this in my routine, the, the glutes was on fire. And I never do a weighted hip thrust without supersetting it with a body weight hip thrust. Next, we are getting into glute kickback and glute side kick. So here is an attachment that I have. Your gym should have it, or if it doesn't, you can get one from Amazon. I'm placing them around my ankle and I'm doing a glute kickback. So I am bent at my hips. I'm holding on to the cable machine for support and I'm pushing my leg back as far as possible. And as you see here, you don't want your body flopping everywhere. You want your core tight and your back as stable as possible. Make sure you're kicking your leg back as far as you can and you are squeezing at the top you can even pause for a second at the top of the rep so you can really squeeze and feel that activation in those glutes same concept for the glute side kicks these are targeting your side booty make sure your core is tucked in you're keeping your body stable you're not flipping flopping everywhere if you notice that you are not able to stay stable throughout this then you need to decrease the weight make sure your form is down good first and then you can slowly increase the weight 
In order to grow any kind of muscle, you have to push yourself in the gym. There's no way around it. If you want to grow muscle, you need to be progressive overloading. You need to be slowly increasing the weight, not being afraid to push yourself past failure, not telling yourself that you are not strong enough to do this or you're not capable of doing something that's challenging. Do not negative self-talk yourself. Always keep a positive mindset and you will go so far with your goals. Up next, we have glute focus back extension. So these are great to target that gluteus maximus, which is the largest muscle in your glutes. So the difference between glute focus back extensions and regular back extensions is when you are trying to target your glutes, you're going to be looking down, you're going to keep your core tucked in and your back slightly rounded, and you are going to squeeze your glutes at the top of the rep. Now with the normal back extensions, I'm not tucking in my core and I'm keeping my back flat and straight so I can target that lower back take your time with this exercise go slow and control to make sure you have that mind to muscle connection with your glutes once you get more advanced with this exercise you can hold on to a dumbbell or a weighted plate we have split lunges now this is an exercise that can target your quads hamstrings and your glutes but the way you set up for them you can add in a little bit more glute activation so I am starting by elevating my back foot on two 45 pound plates. When my feet are elevated, that means that I have a larger range of motion. As a beginner, I know how hard it is to focus on balance. So that's why I am by a wall and I'm holding on the wall for support. Now to get the most glue activation, you need to lean slightly forward, but this is an example of leaning too forward. You also do not want to be completely straight upright because those are targeting more quads. So you want to slightly lean forward pay close attention to what exactly you're trying to target and have that mind to muscle connection so as you see here i am placing the dumbbell right by my thigh you do not want the dumbbell to be swinging everywhere you want to be stable as possible so place that dumbbell right on your thigh make sure you are going full range of motion you elevated your foot for a reason so make sure your knee goes as far down as possible but it's not necessary to have your back knee touching the ground make sure you are not pausing too long after the top of the rep so when you are stopping at the top for a second pausing going down and stopping again you are releasing tension you'll notice a huge difference once you stop pausing at the top of the rep and start continuously lunging rather than locking out your knee Last but not least, we have the glute focus step up. So just like the split lunges, the way you set up for these step ups will determine if you're going to target more quads or target more glute. I'm starting by putting the stool in its lowest position. The higher the stool, the more challenging the exercise is. So I'm starting by slightly leaning at my hips. I'm slowly coming up and locking my knee completely at the top. And once I go down, I am slightly tapping my toes on the ground rather than completely releasing the tension and having that back foot touch the ground completely so again slightly bend at your hips you do not have to bend too far over but you do want to have that slight bend so that way you are targeting more glutes than your quads once you get more advanced you can hold a dumbbell to your chest and you can change the height of this door or find a taller box so you can get more glute activation